there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to paint a postcard of some butterflies and lavender, and I thought it'd be fun to use these new ink tents pan watercolors. Well, they're actually not watercolors, they're ink tents, which is an ink that once you actually paint with it and it dries, it becomes permanent. And I thought this would be fun because I love to do watercolor greeting cards and watercolor postcards, but anytime I do a postcard, people always wonder what happens if it gets rained on in the mail or it gets touched with wet fingers or something like that. So I thought, well, these ink tents will be perfect because then you don't have to worry about the, um, the stuff running and it's set up just like a watercolor pan set. Of course, if you have the Inktense blocks, you could use them just like watercolor pans. These were sent to me from Derwent because I saw my video on my watercolor pencil stuff and my stuff was pretty old, so they offered to send me some uh, some updates, which was very kind of them. But I didn't have these at all, so I was very excited to try them. So I was experimenting with these a bit and um, you can use them just like watercolor. The only thing is you won't be able to blend out stuff after they dry. Even after they start to set on the paper, it's not gonna blend out very well. Um, and I had painted this, but I wasn't that, ha and I had actually recorded it, but I wasn't that happy with it. What I was doing was layering up because I was curious as to how opaque the ink tents would be if I used it thickly. And it actually does come out pretty opaque, but I didn't like the way that came out. So I decided that um, I would redo that and um, start with a sketch. I just kind of started by painting the background. This time I just sketched on the butterflies really loosely with pencil. And I'm going to paint it kind of like I would with a watercolor a little bit more. So I'm going to start by wetting the background. You could um, tape it down if you want to. I'm going to wet around the butterfly so I don't even have to worry about trying to cover up the background like I did with the other one. Ink tents, um, they're fairly translucent. However, the like the white is quite opaque. The the black is pretty opaque too. Um, and well, here's a swatch here. You can see how some of the colors are opaque. I also want to warn you: if you put the ink tents down thickly, like I did here, you can lift it after it dries. So keep that in mind. You want to kind of have it watery. If you wet your paper first and then add it, you shouldn't have a problem with it. But um, I just want to put that out there. I think because watercolor paper has so much sizing in it, which is meant to keep the paint on the top, on the surface of the paper. I think that's why. I th if you're doing this on fabric, I've used ink tents on fabric and I haven't had any issues with it running after it's like been washed and dried. Um, you know, I just wanted to put that out there, that with watercolor paper where it has all that sizing, you might have a bit of an issue there. You definitely want to wet the paper if you want to get a blurred background, like I'm going to go for here. Actually, I'm going to wet over that butterfly in the back because I want him to be kind of um, out of focus and blurry. But these two in the front, I want to be pretty crisp. Now this comes with a little overlay, tells you what the colors are. Um, I actually had a couple that were in the wrong spot when I got it, so it was kind of nice to have that overlay if you want to have it just like that. Because some of the colors look very similar when they are dark. Now I want to make my own green because I'm not crazy about the greens that are in the set. So what I'm going to do is take this, um, I'm going to make my own sap green by taking this, it's called mango, but it's kind of like a gamboge or an Indian yellow. I'm going to take this and I'm going to take some, um, what do they call it? They call it teal green, but it's really a, like a phthalo green. I want to mix those together and make myself a nice sap green. Now I'm going to add that in to some places here in the background, especially towards the bottom. Now you can see it's already starting to dry on me. So I want to make sure if I want it to blend, I got to make sure that that paper is wet where I'm painting or, um, or that is just going to dry and I'm going to have hard edges. Now I'm going to take some of this really bright green. It's called Kiwi. And these should match the uh, regular ink tents names. I don't want to get too close to that stem that I put in there because I want to have some, I want to have some purple in there. I'm just going to paint around my butterflies, the dry butterflies anyway. But I like doing these postcards for kind of quick warm-ups because I'm not going to be too fussy or worried about how it turns out. I'm going to have fun with it. All right, now I'm going to take, um, I think I'll grab a little brown here. Actually, I'll go with the natural brown because the other one is kind of a little too red. 
And now I'm gonna use both a purple that they offer and also one that I mix myself. So let's see, I'll use, this one's just called Violet. And that's really, really dark. And I can add more details later. I just want to get that kind of spike of lavender in there around my butterflies. I have to look at my reference photo to make sure the head really does go on the body and the butterfly does go up that high and it does. And then I'm going to mix, um, I'm going to take this magenta I'm going to mix it with bright blue I could put a little bit more magenta in there because it's really close to the violet I just used otherwise actually I'm probably going to just, let's see, I could have just mixed violet yeah, I could have just mixed violet and magenta, I guess I didn't need to go and get that bright blue but add that here and there just have a little bit of variety in the purple. You can also flick some of that on if I want to, which I, I do like to do that. Kind of gives me the impression of more uh, flowers in the background. All right, and while the background's still wet, I do want to add some colors onto that little butterfly that's far off. take off some of that extra moisture there. And a little bit of this orangey color, this darker orange. Probably should have clipped this down at least to a board because I am kind of having a hard time holding my paper from sliding. I do want to get just a hint of the black on the body. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. I'm just going to barely wet it and then pick up some black. Uh, is that the black? He should be the black here. And blot my brush just to take off any excess. I just want to get a little kind of blurry outline. Postcards are about four by five and a half. The greeting cards I usually paint on are five by seven, so it is even smaller than the greeting cards. Let's see, wouldn't really be able to see the um, the, the the spots or any anything too detailed, but I'm just gonna put a little bit of stuff in there. Then, I might as well just take that same brush, that way I know I won't overdo it. I'm going to grab some of that mango. I'm going to put it in the uh, bottom quadrant, and I can go pretty close to the edge. But since I know I'm going to have a pretty thick black... Oh shoot, had a big um, thing of water there in my brush. Since I know I'm going to go pretty close to... I'm going to have a pretty thick black outline, I don't need to go too close to the edge. Now look at this. My background got too far into that wing and I'm scrubbing back and forth. I'm not touching that green. It's not moving at all. So that's what the difference would be with ink tents versus watercolor. I'm going to take some of that orange. I think I might want to mix that with a little bit of the mango color. And put that up here. I know the white's opaque. I don't need to reserve my whites. So I can just kind of paint that orange wherever the wing is, just leaving a little bit of a gap so I don't uh, blur out into the background if it's still wet. I do want some of that strong yellow in there too. They look pretty close once I have them thick on the paper though. I just lift a little of that out on the bottom, make it a little bit lighter. I'm going to do the same thing over here. 
more of the mango color on the bottom, more of the orange, uh, brighter orange on the top. I'm using my regular watercolor brushes, which I think is okay. I was kind of, I've always used my watercolor brushes with the intense pencils and intense blocks, but I think, I guess if I was using them on fabric, I would use a stiffer brush just because um, you kind of need to work it into the fabric a little bit, so I would use like a golden tacklone brush for that. Um, when in doubt, if I think there might be black, I'll just push the orange a little bit further just to make sure I don't have any white gaps where I don't want them. And I'm going to do the same thing up here, but on this one, you're on this petal here, this, I mean this wing, you're seeing the inside, like the, the, um, like if the, if the butterfly was laying down, this would be the side its feet's on, so it would be like the underside of the butterfly, and that would be the back side of the wing. So on the underside, it's much lighter, so I'm going to use the yellow on this side. It's funny because it looks totally different shaped because of the foreshortening. And I'm going to bring it as close to the purple as I can. These uh, these do set up pretty quick. Even when the paper will still be damp, that, that stuff will have set up already. Oops. Watch out for like beads of water on the ferrule of your brush because that can slide down and make a mess on your painting. So I want this part darker because this is going to be where we can actually see the other wing, which is the back side of the wing. Because it's kind of like, it's like, say this is, say my hands are, are butterfly and open up like that. So like where my fingers are, let's say this is the body of that butterfly right there. The, my pinky fingers are the body, body of the butterfly. And this is what you're seeing. Okay, you're seeing like, you're seeing pinky fingers of that body. You're seeing the underside of this wing and then you're seeing the back side of this wing. So that's kind of what we got what we got going there. I hope that makes sense. I think it does. You'll have to let me know. Or look at the reference photo. I'm sure it'll make sense if you look at the reference photo. I'll link that down below. It's from Texels. I like the purple and orange color scheme. I thought it was pretty. Okay. Now, what I want to do is see if that, the purple feels like it's fairly dry. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of that white. I'm debating whether or not I want to get a stiffer brush, but I'm going to take some of that white. And I'm going to take some mid ultramarine, which is a really pretty color by Derwent. I've no, I never really noticed it before until I got my Derwent Lightfast pencils. And that was in the set of 12 and I've used it a lot. It's a, uh, Really pretty color. I'm going to take the white in the mid ultramarine. That's going to make me a nice opaque highlight. And I'm just going to paint in some little individual you know, little petals here. Or little highlights, really. This dries lighter, that mid ultramarine blue dries quite a bit lighter. Plus I like getting that more blue based, um, blue undertoned purple because of all the orange, orange and blue are complementary colors. They just look really, really nice together. So I'm just putting some dabs in there for those individual little little petals. And I like to uh, vary my color. So that's why I'm getting some with white and some without white. Now, as something I noticed with intense blocks that I never noticed with the pencils, and probably because you put down like a a thicker layer, because it's supposed to be the same. Um, it's supposed to be the same formulation. Is that the blocks always seemed a little bit opaque, like they almost came out a little chalky when I would use them. I don't know if it's because you're putting down more, because I say it's the same exact formulation. And I noticed that with the pans too. Um, so keep that in mind. You might not have the transparency that you're expecting if you're going, if you're looking at this pan set as being just like watercolor. It definitely has a little bit more body to it. Not as much as gouache, but it's uh, it's kind of more like that. Now that's right in the center, so if that bothers you, you can go and put like a... Uh, 
another little sprig over here to help balance it out. And you can use up those other colors. It is a little bit opaque, so you can um, you can do that just fine. Oh, that's not the color I want. Natural brown is what I want. Okay, there was another one over here on the picture, but I thought that was a little too uh, a little too much going on for a painting this size. That's kind of small. But you can do whatever you want in your little world, right? Your crafty, artsy world can have as many flowers and butterflies as you desire. Okay, now we're going to jump right in with our black. Oh, this isn't this exciting. Feel a little naughty using black. If you're a watercolorist, you might. I don't typically use black, but you know, what the heck? I'm going to have fun. One in Rome, as they say. It's a postcard. It's not going to hang in the Louvre. All right, so I think I'll just start up here and paint in the body. I'm not reserving the white because I know that the white in this set is nice and opaque. And you can always use a pen too if you don't even want to deal with that. Um, now, the back wing, I can see the outline really well on. So I'm actually going to turn this. And I'm going to have a better control because I'm pulling that stroke towards myself. A little tip there. If you can pull a paint stroke towards yourself, you'll generally have better control. You need enough water on that brush to make it flow. And then I'm looking at the outline on this one. We've got the weird foreshortening, so we don't, we're almost seeing just the sliver of the edge of the petal there, so we don't even, or the wing rather, why do I say petal? So you don't even really see that outline way up here. Um, you just, it's very, very, very scant. And then once we kind of come around to the edge, we get, we get that thick outline. So just gonna kind of just barely trace it, then pressing my brush down more as I go around the butterfly. And I can even get a little bit thicker in through there. Okay, so now I can work on the pattern a little bit. And I can definitely see the pattern a little bit more clearly here on this petal. This leaf, why do I call it a petal? I don't know. <clears throat> so, let's see, the body's here. I'm seeing kind of like a chunk of dark right here. I'm looking at it as an abstract, really. That, I find that to be very helpful when I am painting something that's got some pattern to it. I just look at it. I, I try to draw the lines I see. It's kind of like, um, like if I'm doing brush lettering or anything with handwriting because I don't have very good handwriting. So if I look at it as not being like drawing a letter instead of like writing my letters, I have an easier time to do it. So anything like this where there's like patterns, it's just easier for me to do it this way. Let's see, and these kind of come off like that. I apologize to any um, entomologists out there. They're probably looking at the same, like, she does not want to know what a butterfly looks like. <laughs> it's like when, it's like when people that aren't from, like, if, like in Maine, you know, we have a lot of lighthouses, so, and you could tell if somebody's not from Maine when they paint their lighthouse. It's like, you know, if they're from any other state, you know, they'd be like, oh, that lighthouse looks fine. Um, but like, you're like, oh yeah, that person's probably never, that person's never seen a lighthouse in real life. <laughs> Just one of those things, you know. I'm sure people are looking at my butterfly being like, ooh, I don't think she really knows what a butterfly looks like. It's one of those things, it's like, I see butterflies all summer, but you don't really think about <laughs> you, you know, they don't, it's not like they sit around and let you observe them. I might, I'm just going to leave that highlight there because it's just, you know, being easy right now. It's being easy, so why not? So 
So it's got a kind of a shiny body and then it's got a long kind of fuzzy tail it looks like. Uh, not really long I guess but maybe it's a moth. It looks like it's kind of fuzzy like its tail is a little bit of or the bottom part of its body I guess. I don't know if it's a tail or what you call it. It looks a little fuzzier. All right we don't see a huge thick line right here but then it thickens out as it comes out to the tip. When I dip my brush, if I'm not cleaning it, I just try to get the hairs wet. I try not to get the uh, water up on the metal part because I end up getting like those beads of water and I don't always remember to check to make sure that that they are, you know, that I've wiped them off. I don't feel like you need to pre-activate these like you do a lot of times with watercolor, you know, you spray your palette. I don't think you really need to do that with these. You can if you want, but... Um, they rewet really easily. I didn't spray them before I used them today, and uh, and they were fine. I think they might be a little bit too uh, inky and robust if you do that. So I'm here I'm going for the most uh, bold shape that I see, and then I am bringing down the lines that I see. And I'm seeing like a big kind of like oval shape here. So I'm going to put that in. It goes about, uh, goes quite a ways down the wing. Probably could have been a little bit bigger actually that I'm seeing a big section here. Then a smaller section. And then even a smaller one there. And then I've got two yellow sections here. So, um, Basically, I'm painting around the orange areas. Okay. I think this came out a lot better than the first version I did where I was just kind of layering on top of the background because I knew they were kind of opaque. Um, I'll show you them at the end together and you'll I think you'll see how this one looks a lot more. Uh, it looks a lot more refined, I should say. I'm going to again turn this because I want to pull that stroke towards myself a little bit more just for my own brush control, because it is kind of small, you know, it's a, you know, four by five, four by five and a half. I usually work a little bit bigger, so I want to make sure I don't have, I don't have any issues. Just wetting the tip of the brush, and let's see, that's coming right up to the body like that. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Um, now I'm looking at my photo, and probably just the way the body is situated, the sides don't look perfectly symmetrical. So I'm going to paint what I see, and not what I think I see, because that's usually, I think, the best... Um, policy when it comes to when it comes to painting especially something you're not that familiar with trust your eyes don't paint what you think is there it might look weird maybe I should have just made it symmetrical but I'm trying to paint what I see and up here we've got this kind of long area that goes up to there and then we've got one one that goes from there to there. Then we've got this one here, this little section here. Then we've got a dark area. Let me get the let me reserve my little orange areas here. And then this area is dark. Oh, I could put my little antennas on. Let's do that right now. I get the black out. And up here. All right. 
Now all I got to do now is the white spots and I'm just going to liquefy a bunch of the white. Can you see that? I'm just going to bring my palette down a little bit so you can see. Just uh, taking my small brush, swirling it around, making sure I got a good amount of pasty white there. And I'm going to start going in with some white. Little white spots. Wish me luck. Maybe I won't start with the littlest ones, just till I get my get my bearings here. <laughs> now I shouldn't be picking up any of the black because that should be all set now on my paper. Get all kinds of little black spots here. I know we couldn't see that on the other butterfly because of the way it was situated. I might need to go in with a pen if it's not opaque enough, but we'll see. Might need the white pen. Now, I can kind of see some white spots back there. I don't want to do too much on that one because that one's further away. I'm having a hard time getting a really fine point with this brush and the, that ink tents. Well, let's see down here. We can see little tiny specks around the edges here. And we can see three there. And put some here. And then we got little specks kind of along the edges here that aren't very defined. And yeah, I'm just going to do those smaller specks right along the edges that aren't that defined. The real, real bright ones are up here anyway. When they dry, they become more opaque as well, so you'll want to look at the photo on Instagram, my blog, or on the thumbnail to get the, uh, the dried, up, the dried up version. I think this is really cute, though. And you can look at the reference photo, put more detail in if you want. You can add paint pen. You could do whatever you like to complete your picture. But there you have it. I'm going to show you the other one that I did here. Um, so you can see that this is much looks much nicer, but you get the same gist. I would definitely send them both. I hope you enjoyed this. Please give me a thumbs up before you go if you liked it. Until next time, happy crafting.